stick with me here. Let's dive into these methods. Let me just go live here on YouTube. We're going to discuss fasting and five ways to get better results with intermittent fasting. Great video here. If you're new to fasting, a beginner, or you've been doing fasting for quite some time and you hit a weight loss stall, weight loss plateau, and you just stopped getting those results, we're going to talk about the best ways to break a fast, why it's important to change your fasting schedule, some different fasting strategies, autophagy, mTOR, and so much more. So what I want you to do is let me know, first and foremost, where you're watching from. Put it in the chat box, your city, your state, your country. I'm here in beautiful Miami Beach, Florida, and I'm grateful to be here with you as I am every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern time. My name is Ben Azadi. I am the best-selling author of three books, founder of Keto Camp, and here at Keto Camp, we're on a mission to educate and to inspire one billion people on planet Earth. So let's get into the first tip here so you could maximize your fasting results. And that's going to be to use fasting crutches. This is especially important for somebody who's a beginner to fasting. Let's say you want to extend your fasting window, but you just keep, you know, stopping it around the 14 hour mark or 16 hour mark, but you want to go 18, 20 or more. You could use some fasting crutches. And here are some of my favorite fasting crutches, coffee and tea. You know, coffee and tea, does it break a fast? That's a popular question I get. Which liquids break a fast? Does your coffee or tea break your fast? Here's the deal. If you want to get the most results from your intermittent fast, if you want to maximize fat loss, autophagy, downregulation of inflammation, and just get all the results you want, then water and sea salt, and that's it. With that being said, you could still get most of the benefits from your fast and still have these fasting crutches, coffee and tea. Here's how you know. Test your blood glucose right before you have your coffee and tea. Write it down. Let's say it's 85, which is a great fasting blood glucose. Have your coffee and tea, and then 30 minutes after that, test your blood glucose again. If you see your blood glucose jump up more than five points on average, three days in a row on average, then yes, for you, it is breaking the fast. There is a cortisol response. There's a glucose response. And when glucose goes up, some of the benefits of fasting goes down. One of them is an autophagy. So the only way to know is to test your glucose right before and 30 minutes after. And I got to say this, it's different for everybody. Sometimes a cheap quality brand of coffee or tea will do that spike, but a clean coffee source or a tea source will not do that. So test to know for sure. Another thing you can have are some fats. You know, the unique thing about fats is that Fat barely touches the dial on insulin and glucose. So here's what I've seen. Somebody wants to extend their fast maybe two or four hours, but they just keep stopping it around a certain hour mark, but they want to extend that fast. Go to your kitchen, open up your pantry, and grab a tablespoon of coconut oil and just consume that. Now, it will stop some of the benefits when it comes to healing the gut, but it's not going to give you a glucose or insulin response. So that's the first tip right there have either coffee, tea, or fat and or fat, you could have some fat with your coffee as a crutch to extend your fasting window. I also want you to understand this. There is no such thing as a failed fast. If you did 14 hours, but you were going for 18, that's not a failure. That is a success. Every fast has its benefit. I want you to write that down right now in the chat box. No such thing as a failed fast. Write that down so you're on the same page with me. Tip number two here is understanding hunger, and that hunger is a hormone, and that hormone is called ghrelin, G-H-R-E-L-I-N, ghrelin. I want you to think of that hunger hormone ghrelin as a gremlin, right? When a grem, picture a gremlin sh sitting on my shoulder right now, making all this noise. It's not fun for a gremlin to be around. Nobody likes a gremlin, or nobody likes ghrelin, the hunger hormone, because it's not fun to be around. But here's what I want you to understand about hunger. And if hunger is stopping you from fasting and you're breaking your fast, this is going to be very important for you. Hunger, the hormone hunger, ghrelin, like all hormones, are pulsatile, meaning hormones spike up and then they drop back down. Hormones spike up and then they drop back down. Hormones never continuously increase to the point where you just can't take it anymore and you're going to bite off your arm. That will not happen. So if you just keep yourself occupied, go for a walk, go for a workout, go on a sales call, keep yourself busy and occupied after 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes, 
the hunger hormone will drop down, hunger will be gone, and you'll ride that hunger wave. And on the opposite of that wave is you continuing your fast, getting fat loss, weight loss, autophagy, et cetera. So that right there could be a game changer for you. Hunger is not a bad thing. We are so conditioned and designed as a human beings in this day and age to not experience hunger. But ghrelin is actually an anti-inflammatory, and it's actually a good thing to experience hunger. Those hunger pangs are beneficial to you. So please understand that. Before I get into tip number three here, as I go through these five tips, if you're getting any value so far, hit the thumbs up button. And if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to the channel. At the end of the video here, I'm going to be answering your questions as well. And then we also have Alina in the chat box who's helping navigate that. She's part of the Keto Camp team. All right, tip number three here. Break your fast the right way. Yes, there's a way to break your fast without gaining weight. I'm going to first speak about the wrong way to break a fast, and then we'll talk about the best ways to break a fast. So the wrong way to break a fast is with the combination of carbohydrates and fat. The reason we don't want to do that is because of this. When we're breaking the fast, hormones are going to be more sensitive, which is exactly what we want. We want sensitive hormones. A lot of metabolic disorders and conditions like diabetes and obesity, that's a result of desensitized hormones. So when you're fasting, you sensitize your hormones and the receptor sites that connect to those hormones, they're called integral membrane proteins. So one of those hormones that are going to be sensitive is insulin. And when you eat carbohydrates to break a fast, you're going to spike glucose. Insulin is going to do a really good job at now shuttling the glucose out of the bloodstream and delivering it to your cells. That's because your body has a very tightly controlled mechanism for regulating glucose. The body only wants about one to two teaspoons of sugar in the bloodstream at all times. So when you eat carbs, of course, you're going to have more than that. So the beta cells of the pancreas, the body goes, the innate intelligence says, yo, yo, insulin, uh, beta cells, let's produce insulin, let's get those insulin troops to now shuttle the excess glucose into your cells, which is great. But if you have fat with the carbohydrates, now fat will go along for the ride because now the cellular doors, if you will, are unlocked and glucose goes in and fat goes with it, which could slow down your results, which is might, which might be why you're, you've hit a plateau with your fasting results and weight loss results. So we don't want to break the fast with that. I'll give you an idea of the wrong way uh, in terms of meals. Um, having some avocado toast, not a good idea. You have the avocado toast carbs, you have the avocados fat. That's not a good idea. Having maybe rice and like steak, not a good idea because steak has fat. Rice is going to spike glucose and insulin. That's the wrong way. Let's talk about the right way to break a fast. The best way to break a fast to continue getting fat loss results is going to be mostly protein and fat. Okay, that's going to be much, much better. So I'll give you some examples. Bone broth is one of the best ways to break a fast. I love breaking my fast with bone broth. Um, having some eggs and avocado could also be good. I know what you might be thinking, but Ben, avocado has some carbs. Yes, but it's not enough carbs to really give you a high glucose response. So that's fine. Eggs, avocado, turkey, bacon, terrific. Having some green leafy vegetables and some steak or wild caught fish, excellent. Maybe like a keto smoothie with some coconut milk, collagen protein, and a nut butter, that could be great. Having some uh, raw nuts like pecans, Betty, that's totally fine. Pecans or macadamia nuts, that's totally fine. If you wanna have carbs, have it about an hour after you have broken that fast that's going to yield you much, much better fat loss results. And it could be a game changer for you actually to get better results with fasting. Number four tip is going to be to mix up your fasting schedule. I want you to think about this. If you started to go to the gym, maybe it's a CrossFit gym, or you just started to go to the gym in your building and you started to work out, or you're working out at home, you start doing some exercise and you'll get results in the beginning for sure. But what would happen if you did the same exercise over and over and over, you would begin to slow down your results and eventually plateau. That's because of something called hormesis, and then you lose that hormesis. So let me just unpack that real quick. Hormesis is a stress that you apply to your body that yields you a positive response. Fasting in itself is a positive stress, which forces the body to adapt, and when you force adaptation, good cells get stronger, bad cells do not adapt well. 
So exercise is also hormesis, a positive stress. So think of that as a curve that goes up. When that hormesis curve is going up, you're getting results. You're getting results. You're becoming more resilient, which is exactly what we want. But then you start doing the same fasting schedule, 16-8, every single day, 16-8, 16-8, that hormetic curve starts to drop down and the results start to plateau. So if you think about the best personal trainers out there and fitness coaches, shout out to GC3 Fitness here on YouTube. He's great. What do they do for their clients? They always change up the routine to keep the body from achieving this homeostasis, which helps them to continue to get results. Same thing with their fasting schedule. So if you've been doing the same 16-8, it's time to throw in a 24-hour fast. If you have not done a block fast three or more days, it might be time to throw a block fast. It might be time to not even fast one day, but change up the routine and change up the foods you're eating during your eating window. Yes, I believe doing keto during your eating window will get you better results. You don't have to, but change up the foods you're eating during your window, change up the fasting schedule and routine, keep the body guessing. It'll continue to elicit this hormetic stressor and your body will have to adapt, which will get you some results that you want. I got one more tip for you here, and then I'm gonna open it up to Q&A. Before I get to this final tip, if you're getting any value from this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're watching on Facebook, tag a friend in the comment section, share on your timeline, and let's get right into this final tip here. Last tip is to balance out fasting with feasting, okay? A lot of people, under eat with fasting. They fall in love with fasting because of how they feel. They start to lose weight. I've been there myself. But look, too much of a good thing will end up being a bad thing. So when you get too much fasting and you're fasting too much, you're, getting, you're going to get too much autophagy. Autophagy is great. And autophagy is cellular repair. Your body is so smart. You have this innate intelligence within your body that we could harness with fasting. A perfect example is autophagy. When you're not eating food and you're not getting energy from food calories, guess what? Your body needs to get energy from somewhere. So it activates this innate intelligence, this inner physician within you to seek out damaged cells and proteins and mitochondria, and it starts to use that for energy and fuel. It goes for the bad stuff first. It's kind of like, um, let's say you were on a ship and you were on this ship, a cargo ship, cruising through the Atlantic Ocean, and this cargo ship is now encountering a storm, and you have all these waves crashing on the, the, the ship, and it's taking on all this water. It's a stressor, right? Fasting is also a stressor. The captain of that ship is going to order all crew members to look for cargo that has been damaged, that has been expired, that is least important to dump it off the ship so you can get through that storm. Your body is doing the same thing through autophagy. The Greek definition of autophagy is eat thyself. And it happens around the 16 to 18 hour mark during a fast. And your body is so smart that it starts to get rid of the bad stuff. Out of the 70 trillion cells in your body, 70 billion of them are required to go through this autophagy cleaning process. So you might be thinking, okay, don't we want to get all the autophagy that we can get and fast and fast and fast as much as we can do? No, because when the body's done using the bad cells for energy, guess what? It'll go for the good cells. And too much fasting and autophagy can do bad things to you. It could weaken your immune system. It could eat away a bad protein. And it could actually just ca cause harm to your thyroid as well because the, the, you know fasting could be great for the thyroid, but too much fasting could impact the thyroid because you'll have chronically low levels of insulin. And guess what? The inactive form of thyroid T4 needs to be converted to the active form of T3. And what helps you do that is eating food and getting an insulin, a healthy insulin spike. So we wanna balance out autophagy with the opposite pathway, mTOR. mTOR stands for mechanistic target of rapamycin. This is a growth pathway, it's an anabolic pathway. So whenever you hear that word mTOR, think of bodybuilders, think of Arnold Schwarzenegger, think of growth in the body. Spurts of mTOR could be very healing to the body. But we don't want to be an mTOR all the time. Somebody who's not fasting is always an mTOR. Bodybuilders, always an mTOR. And that leads to the duplication of bad cells and then eventually disease. So the magic here is in the flexing. And I have a whole new book coming out in just a few days called Keto Flexing, where we balance out these two pathways, autophagy, when autophagy's up, mTOR is down. And then mTOR is up, autophagy is down. It's kind of like a switch. We want to go back 
and forth. So I'm going to share with you some ways to do that. I'm going to give you a seven day protocol on how to master that balance here. And you could get this and you could read about this in my new book, Keto Flex, which is going to be available in just a few days, April 12th. And uh, let's talk about that. And then I'll let you know a little bit more about the book. So one of the best ways to balance out feasting and fasting, mTOR autophagy, is going to be the 5-1-1 rule. Okay, it's a seven-day protocol. Credit to my mentor, Dr. Pampa, who explained this to me the first time. So out of the seven days, you want to follow this 5-1-1. Five days out of the week, you're going to practice your favorite intermittent fasting schedule. It might be in 16-8 or an 18-6, and you're going to have two meals, ideally ketogenic friendly meals within the six hour or eating window, whatever the eating window is. That's for the five days. The one is a 24 hour water fast. You just go dinner to dinner or lunch to lunch, nothing but water and some sea salt and electrolytes. A 24 hour fast is great because you'll get more fat loss, more autophagy, but also there was some really neat research from MIT. I wrote about it in my book here that has shown a 24 hour water fast strengthens the intestinal stem cells. So if you're struggling with some digestive issues, a 24 hour water fast once per week could be a game changer for your gut health. Now the final one in this 511 rule is a keto flex day. You could de designate it for whatever day you want, Saturday, Sunday, Wednesday, Friday, whatever day up to your schedule, but you have breakfast, lunch and dinner, so no fasting, and you have higher healthy carbs. Not it's not a keto day, and you want to have about 100 to 100 to 150 or so grams of total carbs, more protein, lower fat. That's going to be your mTOR day. In the book, I have an entire chapter on keto flexing. I outline the 511 rule in detail. There's also the 421 rule, the 331 rule, the 61 rule, and this. This book has been endorsed by Dr. Jason Fung, Thomas DeLauer, Dr. Ben Bickman, Megan Ramos, Dr. Mindy Peltz, Jimmy Moore, other incredible leaders in the space. Dr. Pampa wrote the foreword. So you could actually pre-order this book right now by heading to ketoflexbook.com. Ketoflexbook.com will get you a pre-order of the Kindle right now, and then the paperback will be available on April 12th. So let's get into your questions. I want to know if this has been beneficial to you. What has been your biggest takeaway? Let me know down below and hit the thumbs up button on this video as well. All right. Terry says, any advice for diabetics? Terry, always work with your doctor. I think getting a CGM, I know, getting a CGM, a continuous glucose monitor, is a game changer for diabetics or for anybody, really. And what that's going to do is give you a 24-7 look at your glucose. So you could request that from your doctor. Your insurance should cover it. Healthy keto and fasting is a great way to heal diabetes because it's going to reduce inflammation, which will help insulin do a better job, but also reduce insulin and glucose overall. So work with your doctor, monitor your glucose and ketone levels. You don't want to see your glucose drop below 50 and you don't want to see your ketones go above 8.0. That could be an issue for diabetics. So monitor your numbers and you could do so with like a keto mojo or a CGM. All right. After one month of cheating, after one month cheat, can I take or not? I'm not sure what you're asking, Farzana. Could you clarify that? I see. After one month on keto, can we take a cheat meal? Okay, great. I got the question now. So in the book, Keto Flex, I give it a 60-day protocol before we do a flex day. I don't call it a cheat day. Six zero days, reset the hormones, reset the metabolism, and then we do that. So 60 days, and then we have our flex day. Don says, what's your favorite electrolyte product? I'm actually drinking it right here. Redmond's Relight is one of my favorites. Uh, Keto Camp 10 or Benazati 10 is a coupon code, one of those. Will the book be on Audible? Yes, Betty. I'm actually scheduled April 17th to go into a studio here in Miami to rec start recording the audiobook. That should be available in May. Mary, I'm so excited that you're excited for my book and go Bills. Any advice for hypothyroidism? So I just recorded a great podcast with Dr. Rebecca Warren all about fasting and keto for the thyroid. That's going to be available in two weeks, so stay tuned for that. I can tell you this, that fasting and keto could be super healing for the thyroid as long as you incorporate those flex days. So my book also talks about that as well, so get that. Let's get to some more questions on YouTube. No such thing as a failed fast. I love it. Mary already ordered the book. Thank you. Hey, Beth, good to see you on here. Spoko Bear says, any fa dry fasting advice? 
I had a great result with the 72 hour dry fast. You know, a 72 hour dry fast is a little extreme. Let me just explain what a dry fast is in case somebody doesn't know what it is. A dry fast means no water, no food. And there's actually two types of dry fasting. There's a hard dry fast and there's a soft dry fast. A hard dry fast is the most extreme. Of course, you're not eating food, you're not drinking water, but also you're not even washing your hands, taking a shower or brushing your teeth or getting any contact with water on your skin. That's a hard dry fast. A soft dry fast, you're not drinking water or eating anything, but you could wash your hair and take a shower and brush your te teeth, etc. Both could get you some really extreme results. I don't recommend a 72 hour water fast. I do recommend monitoring your glucose and ketones, knowing what you're doing because it could be a little extreme, but for somebody who's really going through some health challenges, it could be beneficial. You just gotta know what you're doing and work with the uh, practitioner. Um, let's see, can't wait to get the book. Thank you, Nancy. Good to see you, Nikki, on here. How important is it to take protein powder after high intensity training? It's really important for me to fast. Do I have to buy protein powders to get lean results? So um, I think it's if you wanna build some muscle, it could really help. I like perfect aminos. It's not really a protein powder, but it's, I actually just took it before this live stream because I worked out this morning and I did a strength training workout. So I took some perfect aminos. I knew, I knew that it would break my fast, but it could help with the workout. Uh, if you want to do a protein shake, that's fine as well. I like collagen protein. Thank you, Alina, for putting the code is Azadi at checkout for the Redmond's Relight. Thank you for that. Hi, Ben. I'm trying to lower my glucose first thing in the morning. It always seems to be higher than 90. Sylvia, so in the morning, typically we have what's called the dawn effect. And the body activates cortisol in the morning to get you ready for the day. It's part of the circadian rhythm. And when you activate cortisol, glucose goes up too. So I wouldn't really pay too much attention to the morning readings. I would see later on in the day, if you're fasting, if your glucose drops and ketones rise, that's what you wanna see. This goes for everybody. Look, if you're, if you're looking at your glucose and ketone numbers during a fast, you wanna see that trend. You wanna see glucose drop during a fast and you wanna see ketones rise during a fast. That's the trend we wanna look for. So your sleep could, could interfere with that or poor sleep could interfere with that as well. So that's what I would recommend. David says, I pre-ordered the book from Amazon in the UK. Thank you so much, David. I appreciate that. Emily says, I'm obsessed with your podcast. I've learned so much from you and your guests. I'm super excited for that episode you just mentioned about hypothyroidism. Thank you, Emily, for listening to the Keto Camp podcast. Can't wait to release that with Dr. Rebecca Warren. Please leave the Keto Camp podcast a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. It really does help. Is your book available in Canada? It is on Jolly. If you go to ketoflexbook.com, Right now, you could get it for Kindle, and then on Monday, April 12th, it'll be available for paperback worldwide. Um, Sharon says, I've been doing OMAD four times a week, 18-6, two days, and then one flex day. Is this okay? I like that schedule. Yeah, do that for a couple months and then change it up. I like that, Sharon. David, it will be available, right? It's available right now on Kindle in the UK. And then on Monday, April 12th, it'll be available paperback in the UK. Um, I've asked about this before. When does the audiobook come out? Hopefully in May, uh, April 17th, I go into the studio to re record it. Mary says, does stevia affect autophagy? I want to use Ultima for electrolytes. It should not for most people, Mary, but, the, but what you can do is test, right? Test your glucose. Love you too, Liliana. Test your glucose before you have your Ultima electrolytes with the stevia and then 30 minutes after. And it's the same principle for the coffee and the tea. If you see it go up more than five points, three days in a row on average, then yeah, for you, it's breaking your autophagy. But keep in mind, autophagy is like a, a pulsating thing. You could go right back into autophagy, but for that moment, it breaks the autophagy. Um, so test. Will it be sold in Sweden in paperback? Yeah, worldwide, Anna, worldwide. Anywhere, if you can order on Amazon, you could get it in your country, yeah. Uh, keep being told I shouldn't have more than one cup of black coffee during a fast. What do you think? Lauren, I addressed this earlier in the, in the live stream in case you missed it. You gotta check glucose 30 minutes, well, right before and 30 minutes after. It depends on what's happening to your glucose. Is there a dangerous level for, non, for non-diabetics glucose for key, or ketones? Mary, same rules apply. You don't wanna typically see 
your glucose drop below 50 and ketones go over 8.0. You won't really see that in, unless you do like a block extended fast. So um, you should be good. You should be good. Let's see. I've lost two and a half stones over two years. Not too bad. Keeping it off all because of this, man. I'm so grateful for that. Uh, Beth, thank you for sharing that. When did you start intermittent fasting and how did you how did you come to know about it? Says intermittent fasting India. I discovered keto and intermittent fasting in 2013, 2014, and then I started to do it. And then it was for the first time I really started to understand health at the cellular level. And I've been teaching it and applying it to thousands and thousands of people ever since. So 2013, 2014 is when I did it. Terry says, I've lost almost a hundred pounds. Congratulations. That's amazing. And notice some loose skin would a three or seven day fast help with that. It could because the autophagy, but also increasing your collagen and bone broth could help. Um, Terry, I have a video on my YouTube channel on five ways to increase or to um, tighten skin after weight loss. Maybe Alina could put that in the chat box. That video is on my YouTube channel. I have a whole protocol there. I'm being told I shouldn't have more than one. Oh, I already answered that question. <laughs> Excuse me. Let's see what other questions are on Facebook. Okay, Mary says, how does MCT oil affect a fast? Can I take it during a water fast? Yeah, you can take it. Now, it might start your digestive properties. So it might slow down some of the benefits when it comes to healing your gut, but it's not going to spike glucose. It actually could help um, spike your ketones, especially if it's C8 caprylic acid. So C8 caprylic acid could uh, double your ketone production. So I like it. I actually have a little bit of some MCT oil in my morning cup of coffee. Deb says, love your analogies. Helps visually see how your things work. I love that you love the analogies. If I lost a lot of weight, says Sophie King, should I do a 72-hour fast? If I have a lot of weight to lose, should I do a 72-hour fast? That could be beneficial. You know, some of the research shows that a 72-hour fast regenerates your entire immune system. So it's much more beneficial for your immune system. And keep in mind, weight loss will occur as your body starts to get healthy. So 72 hour fast could be that thing to help your body get healthy. Sharon says, I am so confused. Where do I begin? Um, so you could begin with getting fat adapted before you practice fasting. So if you want a, a free resource, I would recommend my Keto Kickstart Guide if you want to learn more about the keto, which is ketokickstartguide.com, free guide you could get. Or if you want to learn more about fasting, fastingcheatsheet.com gets you my free fasting book. You know, Or you could just get this book, which is not free, but it, I outline everything for you from beginners to advanced in this Keto Flex book. What should I eat before I exercise if I'm fasting? What should I eat before I exercise if I'm fasting? I like fasted exercise. Um, you get much more benefits going into a workout on an empty stomach. So I prefer a fasted workout. Will collagen break a fast? Yes, it will, Raquel, because it will spike glucose because of the protein and it will negate the autophagy. So yes, it'll break the fast. How much protein is too much? I don't want it converting into glucose if I don't eat any carbs, says Nikki. Um, a good rule of thumb for protein is about 40 to 50 grams of animal-based protein at your meals, which is about eight to 10 ounces. If you're doing like 14, 18, 20 ounces, which is very hard to do, that would be too much. But eight to 10 ounces is a good rule of thumb for you to get. Thank you, Alina, for posting that there. Lauren says, I just hit my 40 pound lost mark. That is so awesome. I, I, congratulations to you. Hey, uh, how many of you have pre-ordered the Keto Flex book? I'd love for you to uh, let me know. I wanna, I wanna thank you in the chat box. I like that you said weight loss begins to occur as soon as your body begins to heal. Benazadi, Slim Shady, yes, that's exactly the case. Dr. Berg says it all the time. We don't lose weight to get healthy. We get healthy to lose weight. So keto and fasting are great ways to do that as well. By the way, I want to share my phone number with you in case you want to shoot me a text. Some of you on here already have my phone number, but every week I, I send some text messages to my contacts list. So if you want to text me, this is my real phone number. Text me the word FAST, F-A-S-T, to my phone number, which is 786-364-5002, 786-364-5002. Text me the word FAST so I could add you to my contacts list. 
Um, I want to get the book. Awesome. I hope you get it. I've joined Keto Camp, Sophie says, but I'm going to order the book too. Thank you for the support. And I'm glad that you're in the Keto Camp. Um, you could text. Uh, I don't know. Maybe try texting it if you're in England. Let's see what happens. Neil, good to see you. I just pre-ordered it a couple weeks ago. Joe, you pre-ordered it. Judy, of course you did. Good to see you, Judy. Terry and um, Sylvia, thank you all so much for pre-ordering that. I'm going to answer a couple of questions and then I'm going to sign off here. I'm going to be going, I'm going to interview two people today for the Keto Camp Podcast. Dr. Nasha Winters is coming back to the Keto Camp Podcast to talk about metabolic flexibility, cancer, keto, fasting. And then after that, I have Dr. Will Cole. He's coming back on the Keto Camp Podcast for the third time to talk about his new book, Intuitive Fasting. I'm at my target weight and I don't want to lose any more weight. What do you recommend? The 511 rule is great for you, Maria, as long as you're eating enough protein and calories during your eating window. So that's going to be a good protocol for you. What's your opinion on fat fasting? Going, getting 100 to 1500 calories from fat two to three days. That's, that's called a partial fast and it's beneficial. But if you're going for weight loss, water only is going to get you more weight loss. Because I, although I love quality fat, your body does need to burn fat calories before it goes back into your body fat stores. So just keep that in mind. Can't wait to see receive my book. Awesome, Lynn. Can't wait to get it out to you. Joanna, good to see you here. Keto Camp Academy member. I did keto for five weeks and one day on vacay and went off and not back now. Do I still need to wait 60 more days to flex? No, just pick up where you left off and I hope you enjoyed your vacation. That's first and foremost, most important. Pick up where you left off. So you're going to be in the second pillar right now and just go through it. And then once you hit the flex pillar, boom, you start flexing. So you don't have to restart it all over again. Does coconut water without sugar break a fast? Yes, it does because it has glucose and it will, it has sugar and it will break the fast. Hey, Chrissy, good to see you on here. All right. Well, here's what I want to share with you. Um, I want to thank you for joining me today and hit the thumbs up button if you got any value. Monday, April 12th, this Monday, I'm releasing what I believe is the greatest book ever written on keto called Keto Flex. And in this book, I outline my four pillar approach to keto. I talk about sleep. I talk about, there's an entire chapter, chapter 12 on how to practice keto and fasting for women. If you're a woman who has a monthly cycle or a postmenopausal woman, we talk all about that. We deep dive into that. So I want you to pre-order the book, gift it to somebody, buy it for yourself over at ketoflexbook.com. Margo, good to see you here. Can't wait for you to get the book as well. Um, the second pillar is 14 days to 21 days, depending on how fast you complete it. Uh, but I want to send you all some love. I want to send you all some abundance today. Share this video on your Facebook. Share it on your text it to a friend. Anybody you think is going to get value from this. I'm live with you every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern time, so put it in your calendar. And I want to just end this conversation with gratitude. This morning, I found out a friend of mine uh, actually passed away. Uh, rest, rest in peace to Mo. And Mo was somebody, he was a coach at the CrossFit gym I used to own. He was a friend of mine. He, he, Mo helped me become a better athlete. He helped push me to you know, be more disciplined. He was a great friend. He was a great supporter. And he was in a coma for the last three days. And this morning, I, right before I hopped on here, I found out that he passed away. So I would love if you could send your prayers for Mo, send, send a prayer for Mo and his family, for them to stay strong and for Mo to be, you know, resting in peace and send love to him, send love to his family and, and be grateful, you know, be, be grateful that we're alive right now. You're breathing right now. You're, um, you know, that's something to be grateful for in itself. 150,000 people die every day. So whenever you find yourself frustrated, let's put things in perspective. It could be a lot worse than it really is. And just anchor yourself back to that number, 150,000. And if you are just putting your hand over your chest and feeling that heartbeat, that right there is in itself to be something to be grateful for. So thank you for the nice message, but send, send those messages to Mo. Pray for Mo and his family. And um, yeah, it's, you know, I'm, it's, it's always difficult to go through something like that. And I know that some of you have experienced something similar. So send love to Mo. May he rest in peace. Thank you, Mo, for helping me become a better athlete, to be more disciplined. Thank you for your friendship and for your support. 
And uh, I have much appreciation for all of you. So thank you for joining me today. Thank you for the love and prayers. Have an amazing blessed day. I can't wait for you to get the book Keto Flex just a few days away. And I'll see you on the next video.